Hi folks, this is a quick video about a monitor, but this isn't any old monitor, this monitor is the future. The future for retro tech and I bloody love it. If you follow me on social media, you may remember I first posted about it back in April this year from a stand at OLL22 and I was sold pretty much on the spot. If you're anything like me, you've got a plethora of machines and consoles, along with several monitors or TVs to use them with. The problem really is there isn't one job fits all for everything. Whether we're talking Atari ST, high res mode, Amiga super high res mode, VGA, CGA, EGA, SCART, component, S video, even HDMI. Sure, you can use something like a retro tink or equivalent, but say you wanted something neat, something contemporary, and something expandable in a modular fashion. That is where Checkmate's retro styled IPS display comes in. So basically, this runs apparently at. I'm assuming I haven't messed up this image. Um, it runs at the equivalent of like a 486 33. Does it? Perfect. Yeah. Perfect era. 33 megahertz okay. without FPU. Yeah. Um, but it's if you if you I've sold probably getting on for a hundred of these sets now with the Mister. Right. It's over a hundred actually because I, I sell them without the Mister as well and I must have sold 40 50 packs of that. And, uh, I love this thing. What you're seeing here is a Mister that comes literally in the box as an option, complete with tons of machine distributions in an excellent little package. If you're not aware of the Mister project, then you should really get out more or possibly less. Basically, it's an open source project to recreate a lot of classic systems on an FPGA DE10 nano board. So you could just use this monitor as an all in one solution if that's your thing. But for me, the main draw is really all these interchangeable ports on the back. The world is really your oyster. The bottom pod is the driver and comes as standard featuring HDMI, VGA, component, two composite inputs and one composite output. All these inputs scale and stabilize flicker instantly without the use of a frame buffer. They're fed through in 4x3 or 5x4 aspect ratio in 50 or 60 hertz, and they can display 15 kilohertz inputs no issue, which is pretty mandatory with old systems. But then you can add all these additional optional pods in, containing RGB SCART, EGA, or anything else you can think of. The beauty is these pods are modular and can be built, and will be built, for all sorts of requirements. You can even make your own. The only problem is this monitor doesn't exist outside of two prototype versions, which I had in the office a couple of weeks ago. It's a Kickstarter run by Steve Jones from Checkmate at the moment. To give you some backstory, Steve Jones has been in the scene for years. In the late 80s to the end of the 90s, he was involved in designing Amiga hardware and software, his story of which is in the new book by David Pleasance called Commodore The Inside Story. Over the last three years, he's had two successful Kickstarters with custom desktop computer cases inspired by the Amiga 3000, which are very popular and liked due to the quality of build and the presentation. And in his own words, he's now trying to add this quality and flexibility to the monitor market. Any Amiga fan will likely be aware of these Kickstarters, but this one has only about a week left. And so I felt it my absolute duty to let you know about it before it's too late, both as a favor to Steve, but also because I really do want this project to succeed. I should say this is not a sponsored video. Well, not by Steve Jones or Checkmate at least. In fact, when Steve came to my office a couple of weeks ago for a chat and demonstration, I actually bought him the coffee. It's outrageous. Anyway, I guess I should introduce you to the man himself. I'm just going to introduce you and say you've done some good stuff <clears throat> yeah, before. Because yeah. we, we haven't got to the introduction yet. <laughs> so no, I mean, I, that. I told you, you, well, you have to prop me. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Hello, everyone. So I'm here with Stephen Jones of Checkmate, and he's got a new product out or coming out on Kickstarter, which is this Checkmate monitor, which I'm very excited about because basically it allows you to connect everything to yeah, the back of this screen. Pretty much. And it's in this nice, look at this, this nice slim, CRT form factor and 
yeah, this is like my dream product. So I'll let Steve. It's very nice. Thank you. Well, it is. It's just exciting. <laughs> it is very I've, nice. I've got loads of monitors around here, and yeah. I can replace them all with this. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't think you will because I think the no. CRTs are still great. You know, they are great. <laughs> you're not going to replace. But them. it's it's like a, it could be like a general purpose. Work yeah. Course. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So, I'll let you explain about the monitor. Okay, hi everyone. Um, so the concept of the monitor was, I wanted to create something that looked retro, but was modern. So we have modern IPS panels, so you get that great quality. Um, but also, as you saw, the depth. I didn't want depth for no reason. So what we have on the back is we have a thing called pods, which are probably going to have to have a problem with the name. Um, but at the bottom, we have the main controller, but then you have two other pods. So in those pods, you could put anything. Um, we have a pod that does SCARP and CGA and EGA. Uh, we have a pod that puts a mister into it. We have another pod that can put an S video ca uh, card into it. And then uh, there's another one with a Raspberry Pi you can put into it. So basically, it's expandable. And as you can see, it's got a handle, so you can pick it up and carry it around. It's quite light as well, isn't it? It's just... uh, yeah, it's kind of in that point where you make sure you get hold of it, because it's, it's yeah, yeah. not as heavy as the big old 20-inch CRTs. No, what is? Uh, which, you know, um, it was killer. Yeah. Um, but um, it has, inside this um, is a, a steel chassis. And it basically holds everything bolts to the steel chassis, um, so uh, it, it does have a bit of weight. Um, uh, hence, I don't know if you can see the, the bag, but we have a, a carrying bag as an option as well. So you, when you, if you want to take it somewhere like this one here, this is my one I take to all the shows and, and the meetings and stuff. Um, and it's great because it's got my Mister in it, so I can simulate any piece of retro hardware and I can play any games. Um, and it's just a great thing to take around, but I wanted to protect it. These have got different cards in, haven't they? Yes. Um, this is more of an experimental one with uh, some experimental boards we're working on. Yeah. Um, yeah, the standard one comes with VGA, HDMI, co two composite ins, a composite out, and component in. There's a lot of te information on the Kickstarter. The one above it, um, that one's got the SCART, RGB SCART interface. Uh, it's got another component, but it's actually will do non-interlace as well as interlace, whereas the basic one won't. Um, but it's also got something new, which is one of the reasons it's been delayed. It has CGA and EGA support. Which I'm very excited about. Yes. Because it, it is difficult to find the perfect um, for that. Absolutely. So, um, and also the one, the other thing it will do is if you've got a Commodore 128, your 80 column mode you've probably not used you can plug into the back of this and then you can on switching between the different modes you can have 80 column um, or you can have the normal the 64 display and it will do both quite happily um, in fact the the design is an absolute lover of the 128 s video at the top here, yeah yeah it's just basically a hanger to put an s video card yeah. um we, we do have uh, I, I bought um I did, as I was explaining, I, did, I got a whole load of um, Chinese S video converters in to expand. And I, and I picked one that was inexpensive uh, and it worked well. I think 90% of people are pleased with it. Having said that, we're going to do fitting kits for the RetroTINK Mini and the Pro. So you can use that if you want to and just either 3D print the mounting, the mounting frame um, or you could buy the mounting frame from us. Um, so it, it's really expandable, put whatever you can think of uh, in there. The one yeah. thing, I think one thing is quite nice, if you look down the front, um, now bear in mind this is a prototype with prototype issues, but if you can see down the front, which is hanging out there at the moment, um, it's a utility panel. So the idea of that is you can 3D print a panel that goes in there that can hold anything, it can hold USB, um, it could have, for example, an LED display. So if you want to put a GoTek somehow, why put the display on the front? Or if you've got um, uh, MT32 Pi, which has a display. Or you can also fit inside here the OSSC. Mm -hmm. I notice you've got one over the back here. Yep. Um, you could fit one of them in and you can take the display and remove it and run it on a lead and mount that on the front and then have the infrared receiver on the front so you can control it. Um, it's just the idea is for makers, uh, so it's trying to cover a lot of a lot yeah. of areas. There's just so many possibilities with it. It's so many. It's just the modular aspect of it. I love yeah. and the fact that you can pretty much decide what you want from the options on the back, yeah, yeah. and then plug anything into it, and you've yeah. got or create a, your own. Yeah, create your own, and then you've got a very high quality, potentially IPS screen. Yeah, and 
you're good to go. And I, I can just use it for filming anything, and it looks great on with so many machines. I, I suppose I should cover the um, the panels because uh, when you go onto the Kickstarter, it's very important to understand that what you're buying is the main chassis and the control, all the electronics. What you're not getting with that is the panel. And there's a really good reason. I know it sounds stupid, but it's a good reason. Later on, when you come to sorting out your payment, you'll be able to choose between one of three panels. So one will be, this is the middle one, which is the default. This is my favorite. This default panel and the prices are all on the Kickstarter. Um, but we're gonna have a, a, a budget version, so it'll be le obviously less expensive. But then we're doing the unicorn one. And the idea of that is, to make one for gamers, so really low latency, really nice high res. I should say I haven't been paid for this. This <clears throat> no. is I'm, I'm just here because I really didn't even like... buy the coffee. I did, yeah, he even bought the coffee. Yeah, I did. Yeah, really but, nice. yeah, I lost money in this venture <laughs> because, because I'm just looking forward to seeing this come out. So, what's the sort of um, lead time? What are you expect? How long are you expecting? So the Kickstarter's on at the moment. We're about a week into it. It, it uh, finishes on the 18th of December. Once that's done. Um, the, everything's explained on the Kickstarter, but the timeline for delivery at the moment is between September to December. Now, what that means is I start shipping in September. So like with my cases, because I actually assemble them all and I build them all and test them um, and then they ship them out. And I can only do so many so far. So the cases took about two months in total to ship the whole lot because it was quite a lot and it'll be about the same amount of time. So the shipping starts in September and ends probably early December for next year. Um, but it's done by invoice. So as soon as you pay your shipping costs, you get an invoice number, that's your place in the yep. queue. Perfect. Thanks for coming down. Yeah, thanks so, thanks so much. It's really nice. And uh, I, one thing I will say, and I said to me earlier was, uh, somebody hopefully remember a couple of videos on the Amiga, and, uh, which, yes, the sucker. <laughs> I, I really liked it, and I really liked it for a very good reason, was that my original product in the late, very late 80s, the Checkmate 1500 he mentioned in there yeah. because of the Commodore 1500. Most people don't know the story, and it was really, I really appreciate it. I did get a bit emotional. I tell people now I'm 60, I, I kind of get a bit emotional, too emotional. Um, but that did actually get to me because someone actually M mate, you know, and that was before David brought his book out with my chapter. Yeah, I didn't even know you watched it. To be fair, no, I, I, I'm, I'm glad it, it made an impact. Really good. Yeah, but thanks for coming in. Yeah, appreciate and, it. And um, I guess I will show you guys some more stuff about the monitor now. Mmm, just look at it running those DOS resolutions without any issue. That's what I'm talking about. Whilst I had it in my proximity, I managed to test the screen with a few systems, and they all worked very well, but Steve has compiled a list of his own tested machines, which should fill you with some confidence, and his YouTube channel is filled with the monitor running with various machines also. He informs me that the pricing with their recommended IPS screen will be £369 plus VAT and shipping. You might note that on the Kickstarter you pay for the chassis to start with and then can select the screen later. And this kind of spreads out the price a bit and allows you to really customise what screen you want. It's a lovely, I, I like that mouse actually. I really like CGA, it's just something about it. It's just yeah! Limited, it's such a weird choice of colours as well. <laughs> it's a, it is a seriously <laughs> weird choice. Actually the, op the alternative palette is actually okay. Other things to note, Steve informs me that the latency is about 1 60th of a second, and I know that's important to a lot of people, but he's found what he calls the unicorn panel from Arcuda, which has a latency of 1 millisecond and can handle 15 kilohertz natively. So if that's your thing, that might float your boat. This stand you see on the bottom, that's actually a stretch goal, although it looks pretty neat without it anyway and suits some older systems better that way. You also get a pretty mean pair of speakers built in, which is quite nice and something that's missing on a lot of professional monitors. But remember, this is not a CRT. It's never going to be a CRT. It looks good, it looks good from multiple angles, and it works well. But if your expectations are at CRT level, then you should probably manage them a little bit. This doesn't put me off because aesthetically it looks amazing and I just love the pure convenience of it. That's what a lot of people want, I think.
and he has informed me about an HDMI output, which I really want. You know, I can record stuff as I'm using it then, that would be amazing. It may be available in the future, but in lieu of that, you could always use one of the Mister's outputs to record footage. And I think that's the main takeaway with this beast. Flexibility. The bottom board, the main driver, also contains headers for various inputs internally, so in theory you could 3D print yourself a bracket, stick a retro tink in it, a Raspberry Pi or anything else, and then route that through to the screen. Remember though, this is a prototype build you're seeing. The second monitor Steve brought showed a new edge connector system for the pods, which I really dig. I guess mainly because it reminds me of ISA slots, but also because a lot of thought is going into this, and that's very apparent. Oh, also, Steve never reimbursed me for that coffee. What an absolute fiend. I can't believe I'm trusting him enough to put this video out. So, to make up for that coffee, this video is sponsored by Private Internet Access, a world-leading VPN provider with 30 million downloads, 10 years of VPN experience, and 100% open source software. You all know how a VPN can benefit you by now. Private Internet Access works with all major streaming services, allowing you unrestricted access to your favourite content around the world. Plus, it's one of the few to fully support peer-to-peer -peer sharing and torrenting. Their token-based dedicated IPs give you 100% anonymity, along with their no-logs policy, whilst helping safeguard your privacy by blocking ads, trackers, and even malicious websites. Available for Windows, Mac OS, Android, Linux, iOS, and many more, Private Internet Access allows you to protect up to 10 devices at the same time, and by using my link below, you can get an 82% discount, equating to just $2.11 per month, with three months completely free. Now, I know I should have put this video out sooner, circumstance meant that unfortunately I was unable to, and so I have no idea if this project will even get funded. By the time you watch this video, it probably has already passed, to be honest. But Steve told me that if it doesn't, then that's it. The monitor won't be made, which would be a crying shame. But in either case, I just wanted to share it because frankly, it's cool as heck, and I'm surprised it hasn't been done sooner. I'm going to leave you with some more footage, and until next time, I've been Nostalgia Nerd. Toodaloo. Actually created a fantastic piece of art. Look at that. <laughs> world, is that your, 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 your no. version of the world, is it? Um, no, it's just, I don't know, I was, just, I was messing around with... It's a wonderful world. I, I that is know. not a wonderful it world. It was not meant to be on camera. <laughs> because I, I, when I installed it, the, the, um, the actual sample pictures didn't, didn't, didn't come off. Uh -huh. so, unfortunately, but yeah, it's... <laughs> nice, okay. Yeah, it's got a puddle. I mean, it, it, it shows, shows EGA, colors. yeah, it shows yeah. colours, yeah. <laughs> got any, uh, is there any games on here? Yeah, I've got a great, I've got a kind of great game. Um... Oh, that's some stellar EGA graphics. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Speaker. Yes, it, it doesn't use sound blaster. No. It's actually, it's actually quite good. I remember playing this on the Amiga and just being blown away because mm. it was just like the arcade. This isn't quite, but it, it, to be fair, it isn't actually. It's, it's pretty good actually. Oh, do you want her? No, do you want to see something actually more interesting? Watch this. We're running Mac OS in an Amiga. Yep. This. Back to the old days. <laughs> we had this thing. So this is basically going to be a 50 megahertz 030 Macintosh. Teddy bear bands. I like teddy bears. Yes. Well. And we'll keep, like, my little boy. We got bought in Big Ten from Germany. It was literally big. Ten. Oh, I mean.